As a kid, I grew up watching the classic Star Trek reruns. I loved the adventures of Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, Scotty, and the rest of the original Starship Enterprise crew. So when Star Trek The Next Generation was first announced, I was unsure. However, the series soon won me over, and I was a hardcore fan through 2005. Unfortunately, J.J. Trek and subsequent Kurtzman Trek were so bad, it put me off Star Trek for what I thought was forever. And that included the terrible Picard season. Thus, when Picard S3 was first announced, my first thought was, yeah, get the heck out of Dodge. The heck do I want with this? Rubbish! Garbage! But then people whose opinion I respect, who also hated all the Trek since 2005, started saying, well, Picard Season 3 is actually pretty good. And so, ever so reluctantly, I gave Paramount the f a subscription and gave the first episode a look-see. The story begins with Beverly Crusher on the SS Elios, in what appears to be an older, smaller civilian starship. The Elios gets bored by a couple of unknown aliens. Beverly locks her companion safely away, then kills the intruders, one execution style. However, Beverly is injured and so sends a coded message to Admiral Jean-Luc Picard. In France, Picard is getting ready to move off planet with his Romulan housekeeper. He detects a badge chirping from one of his trunks. It is his old communicator from the Enterprise-D. After decrypting the message, Picard seeks out his former first officer, Captain William Riker. The two come up with a scheme to help Beverly, who is apparently outside Federation space, by staging a surprise inspection aboard the newly refit USS Titan, Riker's old command. Meanwhile, a Starfleet intelligence officer named Rafi attempts to get some information on a weapon of mass destruction. She's given a clue about Red Lady. In space dock, Picard and Riker arrive on the USS Titan and are greeted by former Borg Seven of Nine, now going by our old human name, Commander Annika Hansen, as her captain has a strong dislike of things Borg. After a tour of the Titan, the ship sets out for its Frontier Day destination. <clears throat> At dinner with Captain Shaw, Riker and Picard learn that he's a by-the-book officer and does not approve of their old adventures, no matter how exciting. As such, he declines their request. Picard and Riker go back to the drawing board, only to be summoned by Seven. She demands the truth, so they open up to her. She takes him to the bridge where they find they are at the nebula that Beverly's supposed to be at. Seven arranges it so they can steal a shuttle. Shaw finds out and is not happy. Meanwhile, Rafi gets a briefing from her mysterious handler. She's able to figure out that the Red Lady refers to a red statue of Captain Rachel Garrett of the destroyed USS Enterprise-C. She takes her ship there in time to see a Starfleet building fall into a portal and they get deposited yards away, destroyed. At the nebula, Riker and Picard board the Elios. They find evidence of a firefight and find Beverly in a stasis pod. Riker is captured by a man who claims to be Beverly's son. About that time, a large alien spacecraft approaches. The first thing of note about Picard Season 3 are the member berries. There is so much fan service in this episode, and yet it isn't fan service overload, at least not to me. That said, I loved seeing the different things in Picard's home from the various TNG episodes. Ditto the Elios, where we see many things from Beverly's, of Beverly's from the TNG series. But it doesn't stop there. There are minor but clear nods to TOS and TNG movies from fonts used to musical elements. There are videos out there documenting all of the various Easter eggs, so I won't go into those here. Nevertheless, while it was clearly bait for OG Star Trek fans, I think it was needed to help get rid of the stench of the J.J. and Kurtzman Trek era. It was as if showrunner and writer Terry, Terry Metalis was saying, you know, I know all this new Trek has been rubbish, but I'm actually a fan, and here are my credentials. I know what I'm talking about. That aside, in terms of story, Riker and Picard's plan to get Beverly was pretty stupid. However, the Riker and Picard team-up was pretty amazing. I've always liked Riker as a character, but in this episode, he really gets a chance to shine. And in my opinion, I liked his, uh, his banter and everything. 
I liked his jokes about how they were getting older, even though Picard is still an elderly android from the previous seasons. And that's insanely stupid, but thankfully, the story just ignores this aspect of the character. Beverly is a rather kick-ass kind of character in this episode. Not sure why she has a shotgun phaser, but I let it pass. And man, she executed one of the downed aliens. That surprised me, but I don't disapprove. After all, this is an older starship, and it is her home, and her home was invaded. As such, death to fools who invade my turf. I also appreciate that even though she fought off those who boarded her ship, she was still injured enough that she had to go into stasis. New character Captain Shaw is brilliant in the episode. I couldn't help but be reminded of Captain Styles in Star Trek Three or Captain Jellico in TNG episodes Chain of Command Parts 1 and 2. There's nothing wrong with Captain Shaw's by-the-book approach, and he has a record to back it up. That said, Shaw did get some funny lines, including explaining the reason that he started eating without them and Picard's, uh, that Picard's reputation preceded them into the room. I'm looking forward to seeing where the season takes the Shaw character. As to Rafi, she's a pretty terrible Starfleet intelligence officer. I understand she's a carryover from the first two seasons. However, after getting some info, why would you whip out a communicator in a very seedy and public place, loudly proclaiming your name and that you want a debriefing from your handler in Starfleet Intelligence? Regarding Seven, I like seeing her again after liking the character in Voyager. I know she was in an earlier Picard, but here she's a proper Starfleet officer. Not sure how she became Shaw's first officer, though, since he hates the Borg. Also, after Shaw found out she betrayed him. I don't know why she wasn't thrown into the brig. Part of me thinks deep down Shaw knew that Picard and Riker wouldn't do this for nothing, and thus wants his first officer close at hand for better insight into those rogue officers. My biggest complaint about the first episode is that it's too dark visually. For the Elios, I didn't mind it so much as it's clearly an old ship, and I got the feeling Beverly is conserving power. But for the Titan, there's no excuse to have such a dark ship. If you have to have floor lamps to light your characters' faces at the captain's mess, it's too dark. I'm not saying the lighting has to be at TNG levels, but it should be at DS9 or Voyager levels. Finally, I find the name Neo Constitution class to be stupid. And that means that somewhere there's a ship called the Neo Constitution. But the USS Titan looks amazing. I love this starship. I cannot wait to see it in combat fully functional. Man, this thing just looks just awesome as it can be. In the end, Picard Season 3, Episode 1 was a good start. And what I wished Picard Season 1 had been. Thankfully, I didn't need to have watched those first two seasons of Dung to enjoy Season 3. And for a person new to Trek, I don't think this is a bad entry point. The fan service would likely tempt folks to go back and watch TNG or the OG movies. And that's not a bad thing. And as for me, I'm happy to support good Trek. And I'm looking forward to seeing the next episode. But what did you think? Let me know below. Like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. We'll see you in the next video.